name's Eric Hansen. I know that a lot of kids are going to be getting drones for Christmas presents, so I thought I'd make a very short video uh, about how you find out where you can fly legally and how to go about obtaining permission in areas where you need permission. So I'm going to use Carlsbad as the example since that's where I live, uh, but the um, procedure here is applicable to anywhere that you want to fly. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into AirMap. So I type AirMap in. I pull up AirMap. And this is what the front page looks like. Now, AirMap is an, a nearly perfect way to figure out where you can fly and where you can't fly. There are some problems with it that I'll go over, but there is generally the best way to figure out what the rules are in the areas where you're thinking about flying. So let's click on Plan a Flight. And I live in Carlsbad, California, which is north of San Diego right here. And my favorite place to fly in Carlsbad is right here at the end of this little, uh, this little walkway. And what do I see here? Well, Carlsbad Class D airspace. That is, I'm within the perimeter of Palomar Airport right here. So it's telling me right now that I require FAA authorization. And that's pretty easy to do through AirMap. And automated authorization available at or below 100 feet, which means that you don't have to call like you used to. In the old days, you had to call ATC and pull them away from their business and say, hey, I'd like to fly my drone. And they say, okay, be safe. Get off the phone quickly because they have better things to do. Now you can do it automate, automated. And it's saying here at or below 100 feet. So this 100 feet means that unless I have a waiver or some other exemption from the rule, that I've got to keep my drone 100 feet or below. The reason for this is that it's, it's within five miles of uh, Palomar Airport. And if you get a little closer, you see there's some areas such as on the runway and on the path into the runway where you can't fly at all because they just don't want drones anywhere near where a plane could crash into them or now Civic Helicopter is located right, uh, it's right about here. That's actually where I, I took my uh, my commercial drone pilots test in the, the Civic Helicopter spot. I've actually flown with them before and their, their takeoff is from right here and they generally go right through this area. So this is also at zero. Um, so anyway, going back to here, it tells me that if I'm going to take off in this area, that I, first of all, I've got to seek FAA permission. And second of all, I can only fly at 100 feet. So basically, that's how you, you find out what the rules are uh, relating to where you want to fly. Now, there are areas that are outside of these zones where you have to seek FAA permission. And you can actually also use AirMap as a way of planning trips. But before we go, we've got a couple of little orange circles here. What do these mean? Now let's click on it and see. Ooh, first responder emergency. Okay, so these will be temporary. These are not permanent like the one, the zone around Palom Airport. Uh, this just says that there may be fire or police or ambulances around this area. So keep your drones out of there, please. All right, so let's look a little bit further um, at some of the other features that we see here. So obviously the areas around the big city are complete overlaying hodgepodge of various zones and things like that. But if you're going to fly here, all you do is you zoom in, start clicking on an area, and you can pretty much see the rules and regulations. But we have a bunch of very oddly shaped red things. What are these? Uh, these are wilderness areas. So that's why they're so odd, because when they buy up land for the wilderness areas, um, they often will have to buy piece by piece. So some wilderness areas are very big. Some wilderness areas are very small, but wilderness areas are areas where they ban drones. Now, let me point out one of the weaknesses of AirMap right off the bat here is that it is not perfect and does not cover everything. For example, it clearly shows that you can't fly a drone in the Sawtooth Mountains wilderness area, but it indicates that Anza Borrego State Park is wide open for drones. And I happen to know that they've banned drones in Anza Borrego State Park. So when I start clicking here, it doesn't show that drones are banned. Uh, so AirMap is a great first way 
to find out whether you uh, think it's going to be safe to fly there. Um, but you want to back this up with something like Before You Fly or one of the other apps, and it will often give you the other information that you need. Now, here's another one right here. We've got a tiny, tiny little bit of land that Sunny Bono Salton Sea National Wildlife Refuge. Now, Sunny Bono, the National Wildlife Refuge, has banned drones. Uh, the officially stated reason is that they annoy and harass wildlife. Um, it should also be noted that uh, Sunny Bono National Wildlife Refuge um, sells duck hunting permits so that the ducks can be shot instead of being annoyed by drones. But anyway, uh, overall, good organization does good stuff, so I don't mind. Uh, but I happen to know that a lot of this area is controlled by Sunny Bono. As a matter of fact, if we look real closely, you know, let's see, where is that? Here we go. Uh, this is actually the Sunny Bono Visitor Center, which is definitely part of Sunny Bono National Wildlife Refuge. And yet, when you look on the map right here, it doesn't really show that it is. So anyway, um, those are just, just a couple of things that you should know. Blue usually indicates some sort of a military operation. And let's look up here. I'm going to find, OK, now this is obviously a wilderness area, as you can tell, because it's all you know checkerboarded here. But this is like a big trapezoid. What is this? So we click on it. TFR to provide a safe environment for firefighting uh, operations. This link, uh, reason for the NOTAM. A NOTAM means notice to airmen to provide a safe environment for firefighting operations. Okay, I think that's a very valid reason to ban drones. Now, so these big trapezoids you see, these will appear only temporarily. Once the fire is out, uh, they'll remove it. So you can see we've got another one. Uh, at the time I'm recording this video, we have fires all over California and uh, Oregon and Washington. So you see there's another one here. There'll be another one up in the Sierras, I'm sure. Yeah, there's one. Um, there's another. Oh, there's a whopper right there. These are all going to be uh, firefighting to provide a safe environment for firefighting operations. So again, these are temporary drone uh, restrictions, but you'll see that they will be lifted once the, the fire is over. Now, as I said earlier, you can also use a drone uh, or air map to plan where you might want to fly your drone. So for example, let's say that I wanted to fly my drone by the Boulder Park here. Uh, this is a very, very pretty area. You've got the Desert View Tower and you have Coyote's UFO Retrieval and Repair um, Office or whatever he's calling it these days. Um, anyway, this is Desert View Tower right there and Coyote has spread himself out along the, this, this road and any place he can find places to leave stuff. And so um, one of the really neat roads to take is this one right here. Uh, it gets a little bit hairy. You need four-wheel drive to even think about it. But you notice you start getting into a wilderness area right around here. And so Valley of the Moon, which <laughs> unfortunately is the most spectacular part of it, uh, that's wilderness area. So you can't fly drones, but you can fly drones here. So uh, this allows you to kind of keep track of if you're going to go to Valley of the Moon, you can say, OK, so I'm, I'm pretty good all the way up here. But if I take out, go up to Smuggler's Cave, uh, looks like I can't fly there. So it allows you to plan ahead of time. And uh, for example, we just took a trip to Yellowstone. And before we went, I went up to, went on air map and before you fly, and I went up to Yellowstone, which is right here. And okay, red, where's my red? There's my red, okay, good. Yeah, I didn't think that the National Park Service had suddenly lifted the ban on drones. I wish they had, but they haven't. So anyway, Yellowstone National Park shows up in red. Um, Grand Tetons is right down here. It's in red as well. Um, and then here's the Jackson Hole Airport. So if you want to fly in the mountains near Yellowstone, you can use our map to look. Okay, uh, let's see. All right, what about, oh, look at this road. Okay, this is right on the other side of the, um, there, there's the Welcome to Montana sign. I was just here a few weeks ago. And so I looked at this ahead of time. I thought, okay, you go up this road. You got a meadow, maybe some animals there. Another meadow here looks like a dry lake bed. This could be pretty cool flying. So 
I pull out, and um, okay, it looks it looks legit. It looks like I can fly here. Uh, so anyway, this is a way that you can use AirMap to kind of plan a trip and see where you can fly your drone and where you can't. So anyway, I hope this was useful for you. And again, AirMap and before you fly will be your best friends in learning how to safely fly your drone. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.